The Apostle Peter tells us that the testing of your faith is more precious than gold. The Bible is full of these examples. Abraham was commanded to sacrifice his son Isaac. Joseph was sold into slavery by his brothers and was a prisoner for 20 years. But no other story in the Bible depicts the lesson of how God tests his people than that of Job. Job lost everything. And in losing everything, he found life. He found God. going on? Hunter, it's not nap time. Police time. Sorry, Sergeant. Come on. Got some visitors. I don't know. Let me check. Hey, last two in that silver sedan. What are they doing here? One of our residents, family members, all clear. <laughs> Look at that. You think they bike much? <laughs> you know, when I was a kid, I had one bike, but these guys have two people here and ten bikes? Ridiculous. Probably just visiting their family. Are you kidding me? These guys have too much money. Tire goes flat, they buy a new bike. <laughs> I remember when this area had nothing on it. Now, look at these guys. Looks like we've been invaded by the north. South, too, Ramirez. Tom? Tom? Doesn't look like he's here. I think he's still waiting on that pie. Yeah. Why don't we have a seat? What's that? It all has to do with his boss. Tom. What are you doing? Who's that guy? <laughs> the pizza guy. Yeah. Alright. Well. <clears throat> Alright guys, I'm gonna go hit the head. Listen. Don't be slackers. You stay awake. Alright? You guys got to at least pretend you're police officers. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. So have you heard the latest? No, tell me. So reviews came in. Sergeant Kalmus frequently deviates from standard operating procedure. <laughs> Dude's a regular cowboy. Oh no, it gets better. Police hierarchy believes he should be terminated from the program. Jeez. Shock. <laughs> no, there's more. Goes on to say, quote, he is a detriment to the department. You know, they don't even know what to do with him. What? <laughs> his communication skills, they say that he speaks to his co-workers and the general public and his supervisors the same way that he speaks to the obnoxious and annoying drunk drivers. <laughs> but the ending, you're not going to believe what it says. What? Co-workers say that he's difficult and hard to work with. <laughs> Jeez, how many chances are they going to give this guy? <laughs> He's coming. <sighs> Any activity? That. So, uh... I'm so happy you guys made it down. I really wish Mom would have came. You know, your mom's not fond of flying. Is she okay? Yeah, they uh, put her on some new meds. Sorry I didn't pick you up from the airport. Um, work's just been, uh, work's crazy. Mm. So, you guys have been together for a while now, huh? Fraud, this is the guy that gave you your start. Is that why you're here, Dad? No, I come here and I see your boss, Simon, all over the table. There's surveillance. There is fraud documents. Police. What is all this? Dad, I just found out that he was a crook. No! 
He's a good man and he gave you a great job and he pays you an awful lot of money. You told me last year that you were making $750,000. Do you know how many years as a fireman I would have had to work to make that amount of money? Do the math! I was making 17 k a year! Dad! Dad. He was breaking the law. And I couldn't let it go. That's why you're here? Tom, sit down! Tom! Have a slice. Don't go off. Tom! Tom! Tom, wait. Listen. Dad's just worried about you, man. He got a call about you turning your boss to the police. They said you're being irrational. First, it's not the police, it's the SEC. Irrational? No. I've been doing this for years. And I know fraud when I see it. This, this is theft. And he's ripping people off. But did you really have to turn him in? Yes, I did. Yes, this is an emergency. There's a man in my backyard. I noticed you downloaded some of my account specs. The Amen portfolio. Hmm. I believe in God. I mean, the symbol caught my attention, but you know. You and I, we're Catholics through and through, which means we're held to a higher standard. And this amen portfolio is sacrilegious and it's wrong. You're preying on rich, religious people to invest in a fund solely based on the name. And on top of it all, it's filled with illegal fees. There's nothing illegal with fees, brother. Oh, well, there is whenever you don't disclose it. And it's triple SEC guidelines. It's a charity. People are going to pay more. No, give me a break. <laughs> you and I, we've done a lot of legitimate charities yeah. and raised lots of money for a lot of good causes. But this... This is the Simon Green charity. Bottom line, you're just pissed you didn't think of it first. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> no, 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 no. You want to just change the name. The Amen sounds like it's a religious fund, and it's not. Just call it something else. Okay? Hey, that plaque on the wall? Trade of the year? I got you that award. As a matter of fact, I got you your house, your car, this office. You should be grateful you still have a job. I yeah. was grateful. Oh yeah? Yeah, I was. I built this trading department with my contacts and by trading well and legally. What's gonna hit me? Karate man? Mm -hmm. Huh? Change the name. How about you watch your back? Or what? You heard me. Why does nobody believe me? <laughs> why? God, why does this keep happening to me? Go back and ask your dad and brother for forgiveness. What? They're supposed to be the ones that forgive me! That's weird. Never seen police here before. Stop right there! What's going on? I know our argument got loud, but wait, wait. Someone called the cops. What are you doing here? I was going for a run. In a black coat and a hoodie? Yes, it's freezing up. Get on your hands and knees! For what? What did I do? Get hands and knees now! You, you know me! Tell him you know me! I live right there! Ow. What the? 
Since I was in New York the last six months working on my charity with Leonard Marshall, an armed burglar had been breaking into his states in my gated community. The police were on high alert to capture and arrest the criminal before he robbed again. What I did next wasn't smart. But those cops made me look like a fool. So I wanted to make him look like a fool. and disabled. Go behind the house. We will take care of him. Go! I'm not resisting! Move! I got it. Get out of the way. Kalmus must have felt like a fool. Just what I wanted. Shut up! I can't move. Shut up! I don't care! Go call EMS! 611 dispatch, 7418, Campo Frito, man down, need ambulance assistance. Ambulance arriving on scene. You do not let anyone in. We have an EDP. What's that? Emotionally disturbed person. Okay. Seriously? You're not going to let us in? Oh. Kalmus didn't want to let them in because they weren't done torturing me. <laughs> back up, back up. I can't breathe anymore. Why are you doing this to me? Because you were resistant. No, I wasn't. And then you went for my gun. <laughs> Are you trying to kill me? Yes. At that moment, I knew I was in serious trouble. You'll never go for another cop's gun. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Each time I almost caught my breath, they sprayed my nose and mouth point blank. I was sprayed at least ten times. Maybe more. <laughs> Dad! I can't breathe! I remember taking my last breath and passing away. Like it happened yesterday. I was scared not knowing what would come after death until I passed. Immediately, I went from not breathing to being hit with a cool gust of wind that instantly inflated my lungs. It was the most peaceful feeling imaginable. Dead naturally, exceedingly alive spiritually. I was breathing again, but not in my physical body. Do not fear those who kill the body. Here. I am. And you are? Give me Sergeant Kalmus. Why the friggin' half you hour delay? Doing my job. Try doing yours. Anyone on traffic here? Pacers non responsive. No heartbeat. Starting compressions. Past it. Deep lacerations on both wrists. What do you think happened? Uh, signs look like he was repeatedly dealt with pepper spray. Point blank. Abuse? Uh, and torture. Breaths. Feel for pulse. Feel for happy. signs of life. We need to move him now if he's going to have a chance. Okay, on the count of three. One, two, three. Kalmus and accomplices finished inflicting grievous bodily harm with malicious intent to kill and destroy me. Five police officers, forsaking their oaths and duties, watched unprovoked murder. No one even attempted to stop Kalmus. On the move. I know I died that night. And they do too. I was dead for at least 12 minutes. And anytime you're dead, it's too long. Unless it's your point in time. Come back, come back. Come back. Okay.
running EKG. Flatline, three minutes. I laid in that ambulance struggling to breathe, one shallow, sporadic breath at a time. I just killed you. It's Kelmus. No air. He's trying to kill me again, trying to bury his dirty secret with me. Who the hell turned off the oxygen? The Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. I didn't see him. But I heard him. We need a room. What room number? First and foremost, I respect law enforcement. I appreciate their hard work and dedication that keeps us safe. And even though my story may be troubling to a few, there are always going to be a few bad ones. But this story isn't about those guys. It's about how that experience changed my life. Okay, vitals. Temperature 103.4, pulse 118, respiratory 28, blood pressure 148 over 68. Thank you, we'll take it from here. What happened to this man? He is a suspect in a breaking and entering. He attacked us. Take off his cuffs. Now? I want to just say for the record, that man is a violent predator. He attacked me and he reached for my weapon. I understand that, officer, but right now he is not a threat. Take them off now. What was his blood pressure? 130 over 30. All right, let's check his O2. You can go now. Can we get some help in here? This doesn't look good. Dude, we got this. We've been through Guys. In here. Sit down. You too. I want to be sure, so we need to review a few things. We did ask for his identification? I think so. Yes. Yes, we did. And he refused, right? I, I don't know. Well, he did. Then he attacked me and he went for my gun. I didn't see that. I just saw him standing there. The gun was on the ground. And then that's when you attacked him? Yeah. I mean, you hit first, right? From behind? Yeah. So you must have seen him attack me. Or you never would have attacked him. He was going for your gun. So you did think he was dangerous? Of course. He was going for that gun. And after he attacked me, he took my gun. We tried to subdue him. And that's when you initiated the pepper spray? Yeah, I got him once. No, twice. See, that doesn't matter. What matters is that it worked. And we were able to subdue the suspect. But he lived there. Well, here's the thing. We didn't know that. He never identified himself. He just attacked us. telling us anything about my son Tom. Well, I can tell you something. He's lucky he's not dead. He attacked us. And you know what I'm thinking? Must be steroids. My son never used steroids. Why would you say that? Did you not just hear me? He attacked us. Unless he's just crazy. And then he started crying for his daddy and his brother. How pathetic. Watch your mouth. Are you sure it's not something that you did? So we had an EDP tonight. Emotionally disturbed person. Should have seen me. It was incredible. So it was... Are you Sergeant Kelmus? Well, now that all depends. Who wants to know? Your attorney. Can we talk privately? Sure. I'm back. Why do I need an attorney? Shut up. Have a seat. I work for the police union. I'm here to make sure that tonight's arrest doesn't embarrass the department or cost you your job. Do I have permission to represent you should you need legal counsel? I guess so. At uh, 
1 a.m. this morning, when you were told that emergency medical services would arrive on site, did you tell Officer Jay Hunter they can wait a few? Excuse me? Did you at any point tonight, did you instruct officers under your command to detain medical personnel from treating the suspect? Never. So if I ask Officer Hunter the same question, he can verify that medical treatment was not detained? He better. Okay. Um, other than Officer Hunter and that whacknut security guard, Santiago Diaz, was there anyone else around you when you were told EMS arrived on site and you said to not let them in? No, sir. Hmm. You mean that wannabe cop said that I said to hold medical? I said no civilians to be let in. Why would I stop the ambulance? Why, um, did you keep handcuffs on the suspect while you transported him to the hospital? Well, uh, was it because that you thought maybe he was a danger to himself or others? Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Fine. Thank you. Um, why don't you go talk to Officer Hunter and tell him that I'll be taking his side of the story in a few. I will. The police cuffed him again? Yeah, about 10 minutes ago. Okay, let's find out what happened to this man. So, how's he doing? He's stable. Good, I'm mandating the Baker Act. There's no need for that. His injuries were severe enough that we don't have to. No, no, I want this guy, mental health evaluation. He attacked multiple officers unprovoked. I need you to sign this. Oh yeah, I'm not signing that. <laughs> okay, well, it's a good thing I'm in charge then. Okay, let's get an x-ray of his lungs and do his wrist too. Okay, I'm on it. Lord, please watch over this man. Give him the strength to heal and the determination to recover. In Jesus' name, amen. I spent two days in the ICU restrained to that bed. The doctors told me that I shouldn't have survived. My skin was on fire, I was sweating profusely, and my lungs completely collapsed, but God saved me. Is this everything? Yep. All right, you're dismissed. Chief, I just want you to know that I- Please leave. It was a good arrest. Look, Matt, two counties over, a 27-year-old male died from being restrained and pepper sprayed. I mean, that caused quite the ruckus over there. I don't want a ruckus in my department. So what, were 50 deaths attributed to pepper spray over the past five years? How many times did they pepper spray this guy? Our suspect didn't die. No, but he came darn close, and he wasn't on anything. Oh, no, no, we don't know that yet. Look, this was textbook. The officers perceived him as a threat. Who are you kidding? He lived across the street. He could have been going for a walk for all we know. It's perception and reality. Was he just out for a walk? Who knows? Who cares? He failed to identify himself. He doesn't have to identify himself. I mean, maybe he didn't know that was a police officer. <laughs> Come on, Matt. Look at his hands and his wrist. His face. His lungs were destroyed. Wait, wait, wait. Seeing is believing. We believe what we see. Juries believe what they see. Here we see a man that was so out of control that cuffs needed to stay on him to subdue him. That the hospital ordered an evaluation psych. That he had to be restrained even in the hospital. We have to build a narrative so dramatic that the audience has to believe our side because it's the truth. Perception, reality. Have a seat, Mr. Lorasco. <clears throat> Thank you, Doctor. My name is Dr. Sam Shapiro. How are you feeling today? Just fine. Today I'll assess your mental condition to determine why you attacked all the officers in a steroid rage. <laughs> I've never taken steroids a day in my life. What about Haldol? 
Maybe you attack them because you stopped taking Haldol. Never have. I've never even had it prescribed. Where are you getting this garbage? Police report. So what made you attack the officers? I didn't attack anyone. All the officers are lying? Yes. You had a fight with your boss? You were accusing Simon Green of fraud. Uh, yeah, because he did it. And I've already contacted the SEC. He's your friend? Was my boss. What does that have to do with- Your internet? mental state when you attacked the officers. I didn't attack anyone. They came running down the street. They ordered me on my hands and knees. Then they handcuffed me, pepper sprayed me, humiliated and stripped me. Then they pointed a gun at me and I reacted. And to top it all off, I got pepper sprayed at least 10 times, point blank, to my face. So you did attack them, but you didn't, Henry. You I'm didn't. well trained in two disciplines of martial arts. Don't you think that if I had attacked the officers that maybe, just maybe, they'd be bruised or hurt? I'm the victim here. And there's nothing wrong with my mental state. I just want to get out of here. I don't belong here anyways. Fine, but you'll be going straight to jail. I'd rather be in jail than here. What are you writing? Who are you calling? Thomas Joseph Loresca. Yeah? You're hereby officially charged. One count no, resisting no, arrest. No, no, One no, count no. resisting arrest by force. Force? No, 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 no! I can't believe this! They've killed me, and now they're arresting me? I'm gonna sue you. I'm gonna sue all of you. Okay, okay, we, we, we oh, need to get started, oh, we need to get started. Okay, Richard, thank you so much for hosting this today. Clearly we have a very serious problem on our hands, and it's only getting scarier. I mean, what if the children had been present? We have strong ethic and moral clauses in the homeowner's agreement, just for cases like this. The question is, what do you want to do about it? Well, we have to evict him. We can't have those types of people living here. What if he tries to sue us? If the charges stick to Mr. Loresca, we can impose fines, possible lien on the property, but a lawsuit would not be in his best interest. <laughs> he should have never been allowed in here in the first place. True. He's not like us. He's new money. Yes. Yeah. New money. Mm. You try to kill yourself? No. I can never cut myself. Jump off a bridge, a building maybe, but cut myself and all that. I didn't try to kill myself. Okay. What'd you do? Nothing. <laughs> yeah, we're all innocent here, man. <laughs> Your kids? Simone is five, Raymond's three. Oh, cute. You got any? Nope. Their mother put me here. Child support. Well, if, if you're in here, how are you paying child support? That's my point exactly. I get one dollar behind, I get picked up, I lose a job, and it goes round and round. Well, that don't make sense. That's okay. The good Lord's got a plan. What? He's got it all worked out. <laughs> you're, whatever, man. So where are you from? New York. A Yankee, huh? So what'd you do? Like I said, nothing. Okay. I mean, my boss, I think he might be setting me up. I, I, I caught him doing some crooked stuff. Next thing you know, I get beat up and I, I don't know. Who beat you up? The cops. <laughs> the cops here don't like Yankees. <laughs> He knows the way I take. When he tests me, I shall come forth as gold. What? Job. The book of Job. The Bible. Is that that, uh, that story about the guy who, who had it all and God and the devil and they took everything away from him or? Something like that, I guess. You believe that stuff? I believe they're barriers, walls. Walls. Blessings come over here and not over here, right? But sometimes someone has a perfect life and everything's good, but sometimes God tests that someone with trials 
problems to make sure we're all on the same page. You know what I mean? If they succeed, if they overcome, his is the glory. But you said gold. <laughs> Whatever. Thomas Joseph Loresca. Your Honor, Mr. Loresca is an upstanding citizen. No prior convictions and ties to the community. Well, it says he's from New York. He is, but he has a home here, which is where he was attacked by the police. This is a bail hearing, not his trial. Save it. Mr. Loresca, attacking police officers is a serious offense. There are a lot of questions here about your psychological capacity. Your Honor, I'm I talking. I order you to remain in jail until a psychological evaluation has been performed five days from now. What? This is ridiculous! Bailiff, what kind of argument did you give? No, no, this is ridiculous! Get your hands off of me! Each count was up to five years in jail. I could go to prison for ten years. Both felonies could cost me my trading license and my career on Wall Street. How could this be happening to me? You want a book? No. Come on, man, it's the Bible. I'm good. Okay. You're up, Loresca. Roll J. Roll J. Step out. Thomas Loresca? Uh, yeah. Hi, I'm uh, Dr. Saul Wright. Pleasure to meet you. Likewise. Are we treating you well here? I mean, I, I guess so. I mean, three hots in a cot, if you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, uh, not much more you could ask for, right? I want to go home. Well, that's why we're here today. Mr. Loresca. Hey. Tom. Just Tom. Okay. Tom. As you know, the uh, judge asked me to review your case file, and, and I have. But I'd really like to know a little more about you. So. What do you do for a living? I'm a market maker, and I trade stocks using the firm's capital uh, for short-term gains. And I've been doing trading on NASDAQ for roughly the last 10 years or so since I've gotten out of college. It's interesting. You know, I got in on some Apple stock early. <laughs> what, are your, uh, what are your thoughts? My thoughts would be that they make some pretty good products. Huh. Uh, any good tips on some other stocks? <laughs> See, I hate giving tips because if someone were to lose their money, I, I would feel worse than if I lost my own. Fair enough. So, Tom, do you know why you're here? Supposedly, I attacked five officers. Well, is that true? Did you? Of course not. I have never been in trouble with the police a day in my life. My uncle was a captain with the NYPD, and my dad was a fireman. I have nothing but the utmost respect for our first responders. And I've never been in trouble on Wall Street. As God is my witness, I did nothing wrong. You know, you don't belong here. <sighs> Finally, someone with some sense. I am going to recommend your immediate release. <sighs> thank you, thank you so much. Hi. You're very welcome. Uh, uh, can I use your phone? I gotta call a taxi. Of course, uh, but um, only after we finish processing your release. <clears throat> right. I'm gonna get a guard for you, okay? Dear Thomas Oreska, you are hereby terminated effective immediately. Like I would like to work for a crook anyways. Tom Loresca. Yeah? You've been served. For what?
What could this be? <laughs> You've got to be. They're trying to evict me? Yes, I need to speak with Mr. Rosenberg. I need an attorney. What do you mean he's not accepting new clients? Well, tell him I'll pay double his rate, but I have to have him. Just tell him, please. Yeah, I'll hold. Mr. Rosenberg, hi, yes. Um, my name is Tom Loreska, and I've been falsely accused of a crime, and I, I just need you to question the police, and, and you'll see that they have nothing but lies. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, and thank you. I was obsessed with proving my innocence. I spent tens of thousands of dollars on attorneys, private investigators, police complaint centers, anyone that I thought would help me. I avoided everything and everyone. And just a week after hiring my new lawyer, I got a call from him. Tom Bloreska. Hey, so Tom, good news is they're going to drop all the charges. I'll send over some papers to sign. It's all over. You can go back to work. Life can go on. Maybe even keep the house. Just need to sign a PTI. It's a pretrial intervention. P PTI? What's a pretrial intervention? Well, by signing that, you agree to attend some anger management classes. But both felonies will be dropped immediately. Wait, what for? I did nothing wrong. I'm not going to sign anything admitting any guilt. Well, as your attorney, I suggest you accept this deal. <laughs> okay, then. You're fired. Oh, there goes another one. Well, as your attorney, I would advise. That's why you're fired, too. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? What are we going to do? What? Hello. Mr. Loresca, this is Dr. Getty at Hope Memorial. We've been trying to reach you. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. This is just really not a good time for me. Well, we have some test results. Uh, from when you were here. I would like to go over them with you. Wait. Could you maybe come by the hospital tomorrow? Wait, wait. test results? Yes. Uh, like I said, we've been trying to reach you. Well, what is it? I'd prefer if you could come in. <laughs> like I said, this is really not a good time for me, so can you please just tell me what it is? Mr. Loresca? You have testicular cancer, and it's aggressive. Hello? Hello? Mr. Loretta, are you there? Defense, man, what's going on? It's been like that the whole season. You don't want to do that here, buddy. Hey, he ruined my life! He... It's Tom, right? Hey, I'm sorry for what happened to you. Wait, wait, wait. You! You were there? Yeah. Then you know. You know the truth! Tell me! Hey! 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 Take it outside! You know where you are? Yeah! Get out of here! You serve murderer! Yes! You killed Get him. out of my bar! Piece of crap! They say every man has his breaking point, and this was mine. I was never going to find justice. I was broke. And now I had cancer.
it was time to go home. If he would just apologize. You know, I'll bet he could get those charges dropped. And I know that it was all this stress that caused the cancer. And what? He spent $120,000 on attorney's fees? For what? Nothing. He's broke. He just needs to move on. Nobody's going to judge him. He's here. And please don't start this up tonight. So you left us to go to Florida, then you tried to have your boss arrested, and then you got arrested? <laughs> Talk about karma. Ralph. What? I was just saying that karma is- Hey, 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 hey! You don't know what you're talking about. He doesn't know what he's talking about. I know what your dad tells me. Attacking cops in your front yard, uh, doing great on Wall Street. Now, for being righteous, losing your license and broke. This is the last time that I'm going to address this. I did not lose my license. I just have to get past these charges. Fake charges. Fake or not, it's going to be hard to beat the word of five cops. I do not care. I don't care if they bring in the entire police force after me. I do not care. Until the truth is told, I'm not going to stop. With or without you. I'm sorry. And I'm sorry about your health, but a toast to Tom and him getting back on his feet. To Tom. To Tom. I tend to keep it that way. What? What did I say? I was toasting here. Why, why is Uncle Ralph such a... Look, dude, we're all just family here, and we're trying to help you out. But you heard what Uncle Ralph said to you. He said he only goes off of what Dad tells him, so what's he saying? I guess he just wants to know. No, what? What, do doesn't dad believe me? Look, he thinks you and I think you just need to let it go. Take the deal, drop the charges, and move on. Okay, look, I, I thought you had my back. Look, I'm your brother and I'm with you, man, but you just have to- Have to what? What, what, let it go? Let them win? <laughs> no. No, not, th not this time. Absolutely not. I'm going to keep fighting whether you, mom, dad, Uncle Ralph, auntie, doesn't matter who. I'm going to keep fighting with or without you guys. Make a decision. To remove the cancer required surgery. I had never been so scared. Something about that word, cancer, that stops us all in our tracks. But why was this happening to me? If God was truly testing me, there had to be a purpose. Maybe I was just paying for my sins. Better off here on earth anyway. Tom, I'm Dr. Kendall. I perform surgery. During the surgery, we found out your right testicle was cancerous. We had to remove it. I'm sorry. And uh, the cancer has spread to your stomach and lungs. I suggest that you get started on chemotherapy immediately. I'm sorry. strength do I have that I should hope? And what is my end that I should prolong my thank life? You, you. Is my strength the strength of stones? Or is my flesh bronze 
Is my help not within me? And is success driven from me? To him who is afflicted, kindness should be shown by his friend. I was in the hospital fighting for my life, again. One week of chemo and the next week I was sick as a dog. But the good news was that this kept me from thinking about Florida. My mind kept thinking back to my friend Erwin in jail in the book of Job, and then I found it in Job 33, verse 4. The Spirit of God has made me, and the breath of the Almighty gives me life. He gives me life. That was it. Honey, yeah. look at this. Go tell him the good news. <laughs> Son, can you come down here? It's from Florida. State of Florida versus Thomas J. Loresca. Although there was probable cause for arrest in charge of the defendant, the state of Florida has entered a null process. In this case, because of the severe health problems of Mr. Thomas Loresca. Was it good news? <laughs> no, but I played the part. I was very disappointed. All the fighting to have the cops question as to how I wound up in intensive care, all for nothing. For the next year, I got better. I got a job at a small firm in the city trading and I was rebuilding. But Florida never, never left my mind. Okay, you got a little bit. Well, this looks great. Oh, yeah. Yeah, look at that. Just kidding. I can't afford to catch another case now. I can't get another case on me. You know, with too many charges enough as it is. Uh, <laughs> Looking for something? Yeah, did you know that uh, Kelmus had seven different complaints against him? Excessive force? Cruelty? I know you don't get it, and I, and, I, and I don't expect you to, but I've been tortured to the point where I couldn't breathe. And they almost killed me. How could I forget that? Sometimes you just can't win. You have to let it go. I know you don't believe me, but I swear I was dead. I need to have them questioned so that way people know what death is like. Well, you're not dead. And if you were dead, then God brought you back. Your mom and I every night pray that you just repent. You think God is punishing me? I don't know. The only thing that God is telling me is to forgive. Trust me, I've heard him. And I've never been closer to God than I am right now. And I know that he's telling me to keep searching. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. For two years, you've been obsessed with this case. For two years, you haven't worked. You lost your house. Now, you don't go out. And even when you're here, you're barely here at all. Son, it's over. It is not over. And I'm not going to give up until the truth is told. And that's never going to happen. What? Like, I'm, I'm just supposed to forget what happened. I've seen these situations. I mean, it's heated. There's a lot of adrenaline. They thought that you were the suspect. You went for his weapon. You don't believe me. I do. You don't. I know how you can get. Like what? But we're a lot alike. Like what? I've never raised my hand to anybody. Unless it was to protect myself or someone else. Son, life hasn't been fair to you. But you have been given a chance to start over. And I can't watch you watch you relive this again. And don't worry, you won't have to. I'll find a place next week if my own father's gonna betray me. Then what else do I have?
Maybe it's time I read it. I'll read it every night for a month, see what happens. That changed my life forever. God. I don't know what to do. God, please, I, I forgive. I forgave. I'm sorry. God, please, please, Lord Jesus, please come into my heart. And I make you, I make you my Lord. And I make you my Savior. Away, God. Please. I give you this, and I shall be your servant. Not me, Lord. But you. Betrayal is a harsh word, but that's what I felt. I needed people to believe me. I needed my family and friends to support me. Why was God doing this to me? Tom, have you gave thought on the new First Boston IPO? Yeah, actually, I, I have the printout right here. Um, it's, it's overpriced like all the other ones that Morgan Stanley has brought public. I mean, and this one's been coming in at about 100 points higher than where they were priced, which, which is crazy. So if it's me, I'd probably short as much as possible. Oh, yeah, uh, I stole it. Seriously? Well, well, no, I they give it to you for free cancer patients at the hospital, so I Wonder where you got it. Do you read it? I mean, yeah, I, I started to read uh, it, and it's helped me out a tad I mean, Do you read? When I was going through my divorce That right there gave me hope I'm not big on preachers and church but after a little bit of study and a little bit of reading, it worked. Yeah, that really turned you into a gem. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, nice chat. If you ever need anything, or if you need to talk, just let me know. Thanks. Hey Lou, you wouldn't know of any apartments that are nearby the office, would you? No. But I know a real estate lady, she's good. Even better. Oh. Yeah, I hope you didn't mind. One of the workers let me in. I'm doing some of the renovations here. We are working on renovations. Uh-huh. How's this? Uh, we did have a little bit of water damage. A little bit? <laughs> Nothing structural. <laughs> okay. Anything that you don't like, we can certainly fix. I did have one question for you, though. Okay. This. Is uh, she is more precious than rubies? Yeah, it's Proverbs 31. My mother used to read that verse to me when I was a little girl. She would say, rubies, my little Katerina, you're gold. <laughs> and she was telling the truth. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so listen, I tell you what, uh, that's why I called you to have you meet me here. Been looking into some real estate and event investment properties. This uh, looks like a great location. I'll tell you what, um, I'll take it. Great, fantastic. Do you wanna go back up? Can, you can show me the apartment. That sounds great. Um, yeah, if you like the apartment, then maybe we can do a two for one. How about a three for one? <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. All right, back to you. Thank you. So, how's work? <sighs> work? Um, <laughs> it's good, thank God. <laughs> so, uh, your dad tells me you're moving out? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I'm gonna move out. Why? Do you, uh, do you want my room? <laughs> <laughs> nah. You sure? Aunt Moore's not gonna kick you <laughs> nah. out. <Sorry>. Uh, <laughs> I'm really sorry about your cancer and, and everything. I, uh, 
I really am. Uncle Ralph. Are you okay? Yeah, yeah, it's... Sure? It's just that, uh... It's just that I don't like change, you know? <laughs> I can tell. I've been seeing this sweatshirt a lot. I mean, a lot, a lot. Is this, uh... Is this your way of telling me that you're gonna miss me? No, no, I'm... <laughs> I'm just saying it... It's been nice having you back in the neighborhood. Unc, I'm just gonna be right by the bridge. You no, know, right down the street. Speaking of right down the street, I, um, I met a girl today. Yeah, yeah, you, you'd love her. Um, she's beautiful. I mean, God, is she beautiful. You Tom, know? I'm really happy yeah. for you. I'm yeah. glad you've met someone. Oh. Me too. <laughs> Me too. All right, bro. Love you. Hey. Hey. So, Roger said you might want to hold off on those for a while. Oh. I needed that commission, and he was nice. He was doing well, good paychecks. What is it with Wall Street guys and bad credit? He was so nice and kind of cute. Cute? He was different. Different, like drama-free different? That's exactly what you need. A guy that's drama-free, a clean slate. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Hello? Hello, Mr. Loresca? It's Katarina from Bridgestone Realty. There's a concern about your application. I was afraid you might say something like that. So, so listen, a couple of years ago, I was going through some hard times, uh, cancer and some other fun things like that. Um, so anyways, um, before you say no, um, would you like to maybe go out? I mean, well, I mean, I mean talk. Have lunch? Um. Sure. The diner on Highland? 2 p.m.? That sounds great. I'll see you then. Great. Did you just make a lunch date? Cat! It's not really a date. You did. Mm-hmm. Not a date. <laughs> Yeah, it was, uh, it was the worst two years of my life. But, but God, at first I thought that he was abandoning me. You know? But then I realized that he was only testing me. How could you really live for him if you're not being tested? And how would you know that you have faith until things go wrong? So, it was a good thing? I met you. And, uh, I, look, I, I'm stronger than I was two years ago. I, I won't lay down. I'm going to approve the application. I wasn't talking about the application. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh look, there's just something about meeting you that, and, and I know I don't know you, but I would certainly love to get to know you more. <laughs> I don't think you should give up. It was horrible what was done to you. That's just a thing I can't, I can't give up. In fact, I, I relive it most days. So, what is it that you want from it? I want people to know what death is like. And not to fear death, but as long as we're going up when we die and not down. And that's it? <laughs> no, more importantly, I want people to know that there is God. And unless I can get these officers questioned, and get them to admit to the truth that no one, not even my own family, is going to believe me. We sat in the diner all day. I told her how my family insists I give up on my pursuit to have the truth told. Incredibly powerful movie. Thank you. Buddy. Question they're going to ask, question I'm going to ask out there. People want to know why did it take 20 years to get this story out there? Okay, first of all, it was never meant to be a movie. Um, I spent years with lawyers trying to question police. I couldn't get anywhere. Um, then I had cancer, and I was depressed after that. Uh, I wrote a book, 
I've tried two other times in a movie after that. I've called thousands of people, uh, emails, everything I could do, I, I, me and my wife, we tried to do. I got a few thousand of those emails, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and you answered them all. Well, it's it's, all, it's all good. It's all good. Thank you. So, what exactly were the injuries? What, what did you have to recover from? My wrists were destroyed. Um, I had my handcuffs. Uh, I was cuffed the whole time while they were pepper spraying me point blank. And people don't realize how bad pepper spray is. They admitted that they, on the police report, they pepper sprayed me four times, which is enough to kill anybody. But it was a lot more than that over the half an hour that they did it while I was in cuffs. So my lungs were destroyed and my, my wrist. Why did they keep pepper spraying you? Um, I didn't comply completely because okay. I was right in front of my house and he wanted me on my hands and knees. And I don't believe in getting on my hands and knees for anybody but God. So I tried to talk to them to let me show them the house and then they pepper sprayed me. They stripped me naked in front of my own house and I wasn't very happy and he pointed a gun in my chest. What was the sense of stripping you naked? I get, they were looking for an on burglar that had been in our development. It was an exclusive development, and apparently I fit the, the bill. And they never caught the guy? I don't even know. I don't know. And I all mean, these things he kept doing and redoing and not, you know, just ready to give up, you came in and sort of just kicked him in the butt and said, we're going to do this. So what, what made you make that next move? I love law, and I love to investigate every detail, so why it didn't happen and why we should actually pursue it. So I went through the whole entire uh, case and I see that everything that we can actually make it together to practically put justice. That was all the information we had to get. The lawyers didn't even do any work. Wow. And I get to play one of those in the movie. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so here is a guy who uh, is a citizen in the States making almost a million dollars and he didn't have justice, paying always his taxes and everything else like that. So it makes me pursue uh, everything that I was doing and just get it. So started. you lost everything? Yeah, I, I couldn't everything. think of anything else, but for the first two years of, you know, they offered to drop the charges right away, but they wanted me to sign a paper saying I was a little bit guilty and I refused. And they're telling me, listen, this is 10 years in jail. Um, you'll never trade again. Just sign the papers. Absolutely not. I want them questioned. I want the truth. Ten years in jail for what reason? Resisting arrest is a felony. So I was arrested for resisting arrest. Okay. And resisting arrest with, with force. Well, it's incredible. I, I only think that if it happened in today's world, it would be a different story. Hopefully it would be a different story. Yeah, or if it would have happened in New York. Then, but, oh, I, there's one other thing I'd like to say. Please do. Me and my wife have tried everything, and this movie hopefully will help. But if it doesn't, we're offering $100,000 for them to finally talk. I want these questions answered. I want the truth. Okay. Well, we don't know what else we can do. Yeah. It is a true story. I'll take, I've taken a lie detector test in the past. I'll take another one, tell my whole story. I don't care. Whatever needs to be done, I want the truth out there. I love it. So, challenge is out there. Challenge is out there. All right. I hope you find the truth. We will eventually. All right. God bless you guys. Thank you, and God bless you for all your help.